I have used the Pico 4 for a few months now and I have formed my opinions and this will be the in-depth review for the Pico 4. So before we start, this is the first VR review on this channel. If you do like it, make sure to like the video and subscribe for more VR content so I know you're enjoying this and I can keep making these videos. So now let's get into the review and see if the Pico 4 truly is the Quest 2 killer. So let's get started with the launch. I made a video on DevDunk about it and at the moment the headset itself was great but there were some lacking points. There were some software issues, the game catalog wasn't that big and also the facial interface isn't really my favorite. So some things about this have changed so those will be the first things I will cover. Before that, I will quickly go over all the specs. So if you are new to the VR industry and don't know much about the Pico 4, here are the specs listed really quickly. It is a 2160 by 2160 screen at 90 Hertz. It has the XR2 chipset, which is the same as the Quest 2, but it is clocked slightly higher. It has pancake lenses, which are better than the Quest 2 because there are less gold rays and the clarity overall is better. It has a 105 degrees um, field of view, which is pretty good. And it has a great weight balance and it, the headset itself also is just fairly light, which is great. So now the first big improvement for the Pico 4, this was the software. At launch there were some bugs, the performance was a bit iffy because the UI was lagging. Um, and there were just some really minor issues which did get in the way. Personally I didn't mind it that much because well, I'm mostly in an actual game and not in the UI. But it was very noticeable. This has improved miles. I rarely counter any issues in the UI anymore, so the performance is just smooth, that works. I don't have any menus closing down randomly. And the overall experience is just a lot better, more polished. Um, so yeah, that's great. I don't think the UI is an issue anymore. Um, so yeah, that's just amazing. The UI also works with hand tracking, and this is currently still officially in beta, so it's not like officially ready yet for release. But it is out there and people can use it and it's actually pretty decent. So I think it's comparable to the first version of the hand tracking on the Quest 2. So it is nowhere near the hand tracking 2 or 2.1 on the Quest which was released a few months ago. It is the same or slightly better than the first version on the Quest 2. So you can track your hands properly. If you occlude one it will have some issues tracking it because well, one hand occludes the other. And then the hand on bottom just floats off and disappears because it can't track it anymore. There is some decent um, finger and entanglement tracking. So if you do this in VR, it will actually show up pretty decently. And also faster movements, the tracking is fast enough to keep track of your hands, which is pretty great. There aren't any major titles with hand tracking support yet, but I think that might come to the future, especially if they keep improving it. Since the software has gotten a lot of updates, small things like the hand tracking also has minor update after minor update, and it altogether just made it a lot more usable than at the beginning. At first it was a bit iffy to get through the menus because the actual press, you need to press like this instead of the pinch. Um, that would sometimes just stop pressing and then you had to go again. But now that is pretty stable. One thing I did notice, it is not working properly in the play area setup, so you can't map your playing area with your hands. I personally find this a bit sucky, and in the change logs for the latest few versions of the Pico OS, it did say that it would work, but it doesn't. So that's probably going to be there really soon. Um, so if it drops, I will leave a pinned comment down below so you can check it out as well. But I do expect it to be there in the future, and once the hand tracking in the and play area setup is there, you are pretty much good to go because the hand tracking should work from start to getting in game, which is what I mostly use it for. I use it for the menus, quickly changing some settings, maybe setting up a playing area, and then when ready, I'll grab the controller and start playing. So that's pretty great. So probably the biggest comparison is the game library from the Pico 4 versus the Quest 2. This is something which was discussed a lot at launch because the Pico 4 didn't have any major game titles yet. There were some upcoming game titles like the Peaky Blinders, which still has a demo on it. And Arizona Sunshine was released quite quickly. Not sure if it was at launch or after that. But overall, the game catalog wasn't that big. This is also because there hasn't been a consumer version of a Pico headset yet. Before this, there was the Pico 3 Link. But that was announced as a beta launch um, and that together with 
just low sale volumes, there weren't that many games for it. For the headset right now, it has changed a lot. There are a ton of games out there, and I would say, while not being as big as the Quest 2, there are so many developers getting on board, and they release games every week. So even on the Discord, they have an announcement every Thursday about new games which are releasing, which does show that they are actively working on getting as many games as possible to it. And I would say you won't really notice a decrease of games at all. The only major thing that this headset doesn't have is Beat Saber because, well, it's simply not on there. I know a lot of people who like to play Beat Saber, especially on standalone, because you can get into it really quickly. But it's just not there and it's probably not going to be released on the Pico 4. Their competitor, Just Dance VR, hasn't released yet, but it should launch anywhere this year and I'm quite excited about it. Other than that, the game library is just big and you can probably play as many games as you want without getting bored. So the game catalog, I think that issue has mostly been fixed, especially because they just keep releasing any games. And the SDK for the Pico also has improved, so now it is really easy to get started developing for the Pico. And that just gets your game support from a few weeks to months to get ready to a few days, which is just amazing. So thanks Pico for making the OpenXR support ready and I hope they will keep improving it in the future. So now onto my biggest annoyance with the Pico 4 at launch, it was the facial interface. So you can pop it right off. By the way, the magnetic system is awesome. I regularly show this to other people to have them try the VR game and just able to have the magnets connect and disconnect is just great, especially if you have to pop in the, the glasses spacer for people with glasses. So that's really cool. Anyhow, for the actual facial interface itself, it was fairly stiff and the foam itself didn't feel the best for me personally. This was at launch and if you see it up close, you might see the shape has changed a little bit already. And right here it's more flattened out. So at first it was really like the edge was really going onto your face, but that smoothed out a little bit. And now I'm a lot closer to the actual lenses when I screw on the headset. So. This is a facial interface which just conforms to your head and then it's a lot better. I also had a lot of issues with light leakage. So at the sides there would be light going into the headset through the facial interface. And since it kind of cushioned down right here, I have it a lot less. It is still there a little bit, but when I crank down the headset quite tight, I don't see it anymore and it's not noticeable in gameplay, which basically means this issue fixed itself. And overall the facial interface just got a lot more comfortable one thing to say, it does soak up a lot of sweat, so if you're trying to work out, you do need to take it off and let it dry afterwards, or you need to get a silicone overlay. So myself, I ordered a silicone cover for this, so it won't get all sweaty when I play any sporting games. But yeah, other than that, this has improved a lot, it is a lot more comfortable, the wobble is less noticeable, which is also great. And overall, I think it's just... All right, it's definitely not perfect, but there are also third party vendors now making the facial interfaces, which also means that it is successful enough for third party companies to invest money and time in it to develop something for it. So that's also a great sign there are more um, coming in the future. But I would say after using it for quite a while, it does feel a lot better after you just keep using it and letting it form to your face. So while we're at the facial interface, let's just quickly talk about the build quality. It is still a really solid device. I love that the head strip can like rotate this way. So people with glasses, they can quickly put it over their head, put it back here and then it's on. Let's not turn you on right now. And it just feels sturdy. Um, the back is fine. I haven't had any issues with it. So yeah, that's just fine. And again, the weight distribution is amazing, especially compared to the Quest 2. If you don't have a battery strap, you really notice it sagging down on the front of your face. This basically has none of this. As you can see, I can just hold it like this and it will just stay in place. So that's pretty good. And also the weight itself is quite low. One thing about the build, it would be nice to see a headphone jack. I personally have never used wired headphones or wireless headphones for that matter, only Quest 2 or the Pico 4. So for me, it is not an issue that there is no headphone jack. But if you want some amazing audio quality, you will need some headphones. So the speakers on here are actually pretty good, comparable or maybe in my opinion a bit better than the Quest 2. The headphones of course are still better if you want to be fully immersed. That's not that possible. You would have to get a dongle from USB-C 
to a headphone jack, and then use that to connect to your headphones, or you need to connect them wirelessly. But except for those 2.4 gigahertz earbuds, which came out a bit ago, Bluetooth is just not usable in VR. The latency is just too big. So it would be really great to see if there was a future iteration to actually have a headphone jack right here. Talking about the USB-C port, this is not using any display ports like the Pico 3 Link. It was a bit of a disappointment, but again, it isn't that huge of a problem. I have played the PC VR games wired and wirelessly, and both the compression was just fine. I didn't notice it that much, so it is not a huge deal breaker for me that it has no display port connectivity. Going from the build quality of the headset to the build quality of the controllers, it is actually pretty great. I really like the feel in the hand. They are a bit on the smaller side, so for me, I have pretty huge hands. And I do notice it is made for smaller hands, but in gameplay, it is totally fine. I can yeah, use other buttons and that's completely fine. It does feel fairly premium as well. I like the texture on it and the buttons also feel just fine. The tracking also works great. So whenever you're close together, it also works. If you're partially occluding them, the cameras can also track it. So that's fine. And I really like the ring over going over your hand instead of the loop at the top. Because right now you can reload guns and have your hands really close together without having any interference between them. Because the rings are right here in some boxing games, so for example, that's Mills Body Combat, when I have them really close to my uh, face when guarding, it can lose tracking sometimes. So keep that in mind. I have not tried this game on the Quest 2, sadly, so I can't compare it. But it did lose, did lose tracking when really close um, yeah, to my body. Again, that's not that weird because I'm basically occluding everything every light sensor in here. And whenever I punch, the tracking does come back in a second, but it can mess up your streak. So that's some minor annoyance. I also don't really like the posi positioning of the straps. I do prefer having them on here, especially when playing faster paced games, so I don't have them slip out of my hand. Happened to me once with the Quest 2. My wall really didn't like that. But yeah, overall the controllers are pretty great. They are nice in the hands and they feel fairly premium. So that's a big step up from the last speaker controllers, which just felt really plasticky. These feel just really solid. After these minor complaints, there is some positive news. The optics are still amazing. When compared to the Quest 2, this is just sharper because the resolution is better. The clarity is better because well, the great lenses, the color is about the same or slightly worse. But in return, you can adjust the brightness of the displays. And this is actually something I really like. I like that I can have them dim down a little bit in the evening or have them as bright as they can to not save any battery, but have the best visuals. Because the battery life on this is a bit lacking, it is about three hours. So you do have to charge it after basically every use, which is all right. The Quest 2 has a slightly longer battery, which is a bit better because I get like two playing sessions out of it. For this one, it's just one playing session and then charge it. Otherwise, the next time it will be empty halfway through. Quick note on the optics again. The field of view is slightly better than Quest 2 and this is noticeable. It is not a huge improvement, so it's nothing compared to the Pimax Crystal or whatever. But overall, the FOV is just slightly better. And when you really compare them side by side, this is noticeable and a bit more immersive. Especially when you really crank the dial at the back, you can really notice the FOV getting bigger as your eyes move closer to the um, to the lenses itself. The IPD can be adjusted via the software, so that's also better than the three IPD settings on the Quest 2. Here you can just set them to within half a millimeter accuracy, which is pretty cool, and it works absolutely fine. So now let's talk about some discussion points. I won't have a clear answer on here, but I might have some small opinions. So first of all, the big question, do we want to buy this, the Quest 2, or maybe even wait for the Quest 3? So first of all, let's compare it to the Quest 2. Overall, I would say the Pico 4 is a better headset. So unless you just want to play Beat Saber, I know there are a lot of people out there who, yeah, that's their main use in VR. Um, but other than that, the Pico 4 is a great headset. The hardware is simply put better. Um, and the software is really stable right now. I don't have any complaints except for the little hand tracking issue we talked about in the past. Other than that, it's just a really solid headset, hardware, software, and also a lot more games are coming. I would prefer this over the Quest 2. Also using virtual desktop, it is an amazing PC VR headset. 
is better than the Quest 2 for this because, well, the resolution is just better. And if your laptop can handle this, Half-Life Alex on this looks amazing. First time I tried it on again, absolutely goosebumps. That's just really cool. So first the Quest 2, this is better. If the games you want to play are actually on there, keep that in mind. So now versus the Quest 3, that is a really hard issue because the Quest 3 hasn't been announced yet. It is in development because of course it is the Quest 2 is a massive success and there's just a lot of usage of it. So they are working on it. It will have an improved chipset. So it will be the XR2 Gen 2 or XR3. I'm not sure about the final naming they will use. Anyhow, it will be a big leap. So probably I'm guessing 40 to 80% more powerful, which is great. Also, there were some leaks uh, last week about the resolution. The resolution of the Quest 3 will be better than this. It will be about 2300 or more per eye. Um, so the horizontal and the vertical. I will put it on screen right here, the leak from Sadly's Bradley. So it's also the Quest 3 basically will be better in every aspect. But again, there is no official announcement. It could take half a year or more for it to be announced, or Facebook could be next month like, oh, we are going to release this. Let's put it on the market within a month. And then in like March, we have the Quest 3 ready. Not too sure about that. I am personally guessing it will take at least half a year for the Quest 3 to launch. But that's my personal opinion. It is not based on any facts. So if you want to wait or buy a Pico 4 right now, that is just completely up to you. I can't say anything about this, and that is your choice, whatever you would buy. So the next thing which has popped up a little bit is if Pico will survive. And this is because Pico is fairly new to consumers. They have been in the market for a professional audience for a while. So for medical in the Netherlands, there are a lot of uh, companies working in professional VR. Um, they basically all use Pico or like the HoloLens or something. Uh, but Pico is a really big competitor there. And because of that, I don't think Pico is going away anytime soon. And also if they have a little takeaway from the professional side, the software support also will be great because on the professional side, it's really quick to get any support and it might trickle down to the consumer side as well. So I am fairly confident that they will stay. And also it is backed by a really big company, ByteDance, not getting into any discussions about if the company is better than Facebook or not. That's something entirely else. I'm not willing to get into that right now, but it does have some money behind it. And also it is getting fairly popular. The Pico 4 has a decent amount of audience on Steam VR already. And that's even while virtual desktop reports the headset as a Quest 2. So overall, I think this headset is a pretty much a success. Maybe they're making some losses on it to get a bit of market share. But I really think Pico has continued to support this headset and that more and more games are going to come out in the future. And that if the new generation of chips are ready, that they will make a new VR set with those chips in it. So I'm personally not too worried about the future of Pico, which is great. So that wraps up my in-depth review on the Pico 4 and what my opinions on it are. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I will gladly answer them. I have some experience with other headsets, more like high-end headsets like the Pimax Crystal, the VR Arrow, the HP Reverb G2. And if you have any comparison questions, also just feel free to ask. If you like this video, make sure to like the videos and subscribe. This also will let me know that I can continue making VR videos because I'm fairly new to this. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Of course it doesn't work when you're going to show it. <laughs>